What's up everybody, Dr. Ali Hader, and what I wanna talk about in today's video is the two mRNA vaccines that have been getting a lot of buzz from Moderna and Pfizer. Now I'm sure there's plenty of smarter people out there who know more about vaccines than I do, but I'm a reasonably smart guy. I did go to medical school and I understand the biology and the mechanisms. So I'm gonna provide you a basic overview here and I wanna hopefully put to ease some people's concerns and hopefully abolish some of the myths out there and convince you why I will definitely be taking this vaccine if it were to get approval. Now, first off, I wanna address some of the biggest concerns that a lot of folks talk about is that we are rushing this vaccine too quickly. We're not gonna have adequate safety and efficacy data before it's released. Now, first off, let me point out that before this even gets to the FDA, there's gonna be an advisory committee that convenes, and this is gonna compose of experts from doctors to statisticians, epidemiologists, even patients, and it's a public hearing. It's gonna have a Q&A uh, as the data is presented, and then they will come up with either a recommend, do not recommend. This is even before it gets to the FDA. So there will be this transparent, robust process that everybody's gonna be able to evaluate for themselves. Secondly, people are really concerned that we are moving too fast and this whole warp speed business that we've been talking about, and they're concerned that this may not be safe. Well, a couple of things I wanna talk about. First of all, this technology of mRNA vaccines is not brand new. The concept has been dated back to the 90s. This has been researched for a very long time, and this technology has been looked at for everything from cancer treatments to, again, to vaccines and other therapies. So people have been investigating this, refining it, and looking at this for a very long time. So what I'd like to do is put some people at ease by discussing the mechanism of the mRNA vaccine and why we're able to produce this so quickly and so much faster than other vaccines. First of all, let's talk about some of the basics. DNA. DNA is our genetic code, right? It's sort of the textbook of our bodies and it's responsible for encoding all the proteins that are created. When DNA needs to create a protein, it does it via something called messenger RNA. So DNA transcribes messenger RNA and then messenger RNA translate that code into a protein. So messenger RNA is sort of the blueprint for each particular protein. Once messenger RNA creates the protein, its job is done and it vanishes. Now how these vaccines work is they utilize messenger RNA. We basically create a synthetic messenger RNA which carries a blueprint. This particular messenger RNA is the blueprint of the spike protein. The spike protein is the protein on the surface of SARS-CoV-2 that is involved in fusing the virus with our cells to get into our bodies. It's also important because we know that the spike protein is what is involved in creation of neutralizing antibodies. We know this because of SARS-CoV-1. Remember, there was SARS-CoV-1 and there was MERS. These are all different types of coronaviruses. And even though the genetic code is different, they're similar structures. So we've learned a lot and we knew a lot from those days. So it's not like we're starting from scratch. So since we know the genetic code of this virus, SARS-CoV-2, we're able to sequence the mRNA of the spike protein. Now that synthetic messenger RNA is delivered as a vaccine that messenger RNA will get into our cells and it will translate the protein, the spike protein, right? So we're not injecting virus, we're simply injecting the blueprint for the code for that particular protein. Once that's occurred, the messenger RNA will eventually be degraded and all you're left is with that protein. That particular protein now is exposed to our body. And what happens? Our immune system will recognize that protein and it will elicit immune response like it does with any foreign object. It basically will create antibodies and t memory T cells to recognize it. Therefore, if somebody gets infected in the future with SARS-CoV-2, that same spike protein will be recognized, immune response will be elicited, and that patient hopefully will not get sick. That's the whole way this vaccines work. So how did we get it done so fast? Again, like I talked about, we don't have to grow anything in Petri dishes. We basically punch in the mRNA code into a computer and voila, we have our mRNA. So that saves a ton of time. And knowing what we know from the previous SARS viruses, we are already ahead of the game. And again, the technology of this mRNA vaccine has been around for a long time, so it's been well refined and it is ready for prime time. Not to mention, billions of dollars has been dumped into this by governments and private companies to accelerate the production of this virus. Most vaccines don't have this much money coming in, and therefore that's another way we're able to get this done so quickly. 
And let's not forget, this pandemic is running rampant across the world. So there's a lot of infections going on. So it's much easier to evaluate the efficacy of vaccine when there's a pandemic and everybody around you is getting infected. So all these reasons allows us to be on an accelerated path to create a vaccine and to evaluate its efficacy and safety. Now, a lot of people are asking, well, we don't only have data for a few months. We don't even have data for a couple of years. It's true, most vaccines have phase three trials between one and three years before they are approved. But again, for the reasons I mentioned before, like this pandemic, we're able to gather that data that would take a year or two in a much faster time frame. Also, safety of vaccines can generally be evaluated in the short term. Most vaccines are gonna have side effects or adverse events early on. There is not really long-term side effects of vaccines. Of course, there's skeptics out there and anything can happen in the long run, but we have thousands and thousands of patients with very good safety data and that's reassuring. Not to mention, we're in the middle of something called the COVID-19 pandemic. The deaths, the socioeconomic turmoil, the lockdowns and the ripple effects throughout the world are devastating. So you can stay on this course and continue to deal with ups and downs of this pandemic, taking the socioeconomic hits, or we can take the vaccine. Both strategies clearly have a little bit of risk. You can decide which one is worse. So again, I think the key points to remember is we're not changing your genetic code. Nothing's being incorporated to your genome. We're not injecting live virus toxoids or anything from the virus itself, okay? And we're basically tricking your body to create a protein on its own. So the immune response that creates the immunity is from a protein created by your own cells. And the messenger of that protein, the messenger RNA, is short-lived and will eventually go away. Now, regarding the vaccines, they're both over 90% effective. And the threshold for the vaccines was actually set at 59%. The flu vaccines in the 60s. Compared to some other vaccines, MMR vaccines 97% and the oral polio vaccine was 100% hence the eradication. Now there are some catches with the vaccine. The Pfizer vaccine, for example, has to be kept at negative 70 degrees Celsius. That's gonna require some special industrial type freezers to keep this stable. That's gonna pose some sort of problems, I think. Moderna vaccine can be kept not as cold and can be basically kept on regular style freezers. So there's certainly gonna be some distribution challenges that we're gonna face. They also both require two shots a couple of weeks apart. Now, of course, there's some unanswered questions. Yes, we don't have very long-term data, but if you look at historically compared to other vaccines, if you look at the mechanism, and if you look at the early efficacy data and the safety data, I think with relative confidence, we can say this is the way to go and living through this pandemic any further is definitely the wrong choice. If it's up to me, these vaccines come out, sign me up, I'll be the first one online, especially if Dr. Fauci gives me a thumbs up. So hopefully this puts some of your concerns at ease. Hopefully it debunks some of these myths that are out there, some of the nonsense you're gonna be hearing. I'm sure I'm gonna be a slew of crazy comments down here, but look, facts are facts, conspiracy theories are only that. And remember, presence of vaccinations will not end this pandemic. Vaccinations will end this pandemic.